Hi everyone, welcome to Lion Lighting, where I shine the spotlight on special people, places, and things for everyone to enjoy. Today, we are at a brand new place in Indianapolis. This place is called Donuts and Dragons. Donuts and Dragons is a especially unique place. This place does a focus on specialty craft microbrew beer that's here in Indianapolis, but they also have a cool twist that they make gourmet donuts. They're delicious. They're amazing. Uh, I should have some B-roll playing right now, and the place is bright, it's beautiful, it's new, it's clean, and all the staff are great. They also have this cool device on every table so that you can sit down, play your game, or one of the many games they have, and you just hit a button and someone will come serve you, bring a board game, take a board game, food, drink, whatever. And then when you're ready to pay, you hit the button again so that it's less intrusive and you to be able to focus on your friends and your family and having joy. The thing that we're going to be showing off is a game that was introduced to me by this certain individual, and it is On Tour. On Tour is actually made by BoardGameTables.com, and it's a roll and write. So cards here in a little bit will get flipped over, letting us know, and we're going to be trying to make a route of our tour as a band. So. I don't show off a how-to play of the games. I'll look up some how-to plays and some reviews. So look down in the description below and you'll find links for all that. This person made me feel like a true friend and part of the family. When I go to cons, this man's the first one that I see. We're drinking coffee and it's before the doors open for the public. It's a breath of fresh air to be able to walk the aisles and walk the halls uh, before you go to your booth or you go to see other publishers and designers and have a friend. A friend who's there, who's doing the same thing as you, being a part of this amazing um, hobby. This man has just the biggest heart and I love him to death. So with me today is Mike Austin. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So Mike, you're, I, I try to hit everybody that is something different in the hobby. I've done podcasts, I've done reviewers, I've done designers, but your form of, of content is written reviews and written, written content. I've been doing that for quite some time. Uh, I started off uh, primarily volunteering with the Dice Tower, but even before that I was writing for anybody who would take a piece and just hear what I have to say about any kind of game. Before and we deep dive into that, I wanted to, I want to step back real quick and figure out how you got to the point where you're talking to Tom and other publishers and getting into this. So I'd like to unbox, like, where are you from? So I... Uh, I've grown up my entire life in southern Indiana. Where I live at currently, we are actually just uh, about two minutes away from the Ohio River. You write stuff for the Dice Tower. You write all these amazing articles. Did you go to college for this kind of stuff? From a young age, I always had a, like a pretty good command of language. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was always really, really good at spelling like, from a very young age, and uh, I've had like, an interest in making or writing up characters and things like that, uh, but I never, it never really quite started with writing, right? It always started with the bones of it, like the making, like composition itself was not only a focus in college whenever I got there to begin with, I actually started off in fine arts. And then eventually, as an to, artist, yes, I actually drew uh, a lot during my young years. I had a lot of interest in drawing characters and drawing landscapes, villages, architecture. Well, I actually did comic scripts for unique characters that I made. Uh, I even, for a few of them, got printed out and published into a church newsletter that my, oh my family gosh. went to. So that was a thing. And that was all about composition, how to structure something. Okay. And then uh, after I felt 
I'm a little disillusioned with my future in doing that. No, this is still high school or this whatever. Is college. This, this is, is in college. college. That would be whenever I had actually started off. So, doing. what college did you go to again? Uh, Indiana University Southeast was the college that I went to. Okay. And I did start off there as a fine arts major. After a year of that. I decided, you know what, I'm not really sure about where this is going to go. I determined to find something, and it ended up being English writing. So I picked the writing concentration, where a lot of people were actually literature concentration. What's the difference? Well, writing concentration, you're taking a lot more classes about the bones of writing. So you're talking about uh, argumentation for argumentative writing. Whereas the literature concentration, which I didn't go into, is so focused about taking apart things that are read. So you're actually, you're actually analyzing deeply things that are read. Reading all kinds of stories that I hadn't But it wasn't before, breaking down breaking something that was already created, it was figuring out the structure for your own creation. Exactly. Our first two cities here, so we got Indiana, and we're going to put an 86 into Indiana. Okay. <laughs> and then we're going to put a 68 into North Carolina. Put a 51 into Arkansas, and then we will put a 15 in Ohio, which is an awful place for that 15, right? <laughs> All right, so flip over the cards and let's so, see what we got. Our first regions are west, north, and east, and our first numbers will be 34 and 43 that we have to place somewhere on the map. Okay, so let's see here. I have 15, 68, 86, 51, and it's supposed to be least to most. I don't even know. Let's put 33 right here in the west. That's 34 I'm going to go to all the states. They're going to love me. I, I may end up just touring just the west coast. Which is probably appropriate, and fine. <laughs> but I will find out. Because living in the Midwest, we don't see a whole lot of bands, but when we do, it's awesome. The next pair of numbers Central, East, and Central. We have to do 76 and 67. Well, 67 right here is great. Madness. Has to go someplace Central. Oh, I forgot to put the 43 in now. And hey, you already used your west one. What a toughie. If I can snake it, then maybe. If I could go here and then come back. That's kind of what I've been thinking. One of the things I love about this game is that you do have an incredible play space for decisions. You absolutely do. Because uh, you're not only considering about like just flowing up numbers, but you're also doing it about all the different connections that different states do. So for example, we all acknowledge that uh, New England, which is up here, because of course a lot of the states are condensed because you can't have all of them in here. Sure. But New England only has one connection going to it. So by logic, you know that that's going to be either a really low number or a really high number, right? Whereas Kentucky has all kinds of connections out there, which makes the options for Kentucky a lot broader. And those totally, things totally. Are like mesh together across this whole map, making for a very cool network building experience. You don't get it from a lot of games. Because usually, like, say a lot of them say they take a drive and have an average of maybe three or so connections per yeah. spot. Whereas this one, you actually have one, two, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six different connections to some spots. Yeah, and, you're right. Yeah, so like that part of it makes it really, really cool. What games did you play growing up as a kid with your mom? Whenever uh, everything that we had, you know, being in that family, uh, was either hand-me-down or come from a yard sale. But there was a whole lot of chess, checkers, uh, Othello, uh, Battleship, uh, Scrabble was a, a big one that I especially played with my mom. Uh, those are mom, all. Those are all good games. Yeah. I, I still think, even to this day, like, I mean, yeah, they all have their own little like. It's super random. It's super duper simple. Mm -hmm. But most of us grew up with those games. They're mm -hmm. still good games. And there was a lot of educational, you know, benefit to them as well. Like 
learning, especially like say with my father, he taught us a lot of uh, card games, such as you know hearts, spades, um, golf, uh, five cards done, three cards done, uh, Texas Hold'em, and so I learned about betting, about managing what I had. When, you know, the as per the the famous song, uh, no one to hold them, no one to fold them, <laughs> no one to walk away, no one to run. Like that was that was a common song when I was very young, when I was like five or six years old. But then also, say for example with Scrabble, which was a really good way of me connecting with my mother, um, that also taught me a lot about spelling. And that's actually one of the things that I love about this hobby so much, is that uh, we, we get that ability to be able to evangelize in a way, yeah, yeah. of showing off these games to people, uh, blowing someone's mind about, oh, this is actually something I never even thought of. And that's that really is, being able to touch on that level is very, very important. So what are our next cards? These are the, the next regions that we have to place them to. Okay. So now we just have to roll the numbers, and we actually got doubles. So because we got doubles, we get to put a wild, which is just a star. It's not a double. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not a double? No. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading <laughs> upside down. Oh, well, just cut that out. Just cut that part out. No, I'm silly saying it now. <laughs> nah. Anyway, so we actually have to put a 69 and a 96. Okay. And each, in, sorry, in two, two of these three regions, yep. Alright. Put it... Here? Put it here. That's not gonna work. This game does the, not always give you everything that you want. No, it like. really constrains your options, mm -hmm. and so you really have to like, you gotta really think open-mindedly mm -hmm. about uh, what in the world you're doing. Okay, 69 is a big old washitosh. I'm actually gonna throw that one away. Same. I get the circle it's still, but it's not gonna matter. 96. I can't believe I actually got those mixed together. It looks so similar to me right now. Maybe I should drink more. Cheers. Cheers, beer. Let's make that official. Alright. Next numbers are 31 and 13. Let's see. I'm gonna do... do that. And then a 13. I don't even know. Louisiana, I could probably. I could probably. Encircle that. Was that a 13? You're a dummy. I put a 50. When you were a kid, it wasn't board games that you wrote about. You wrote actually about video games, right? Uh, yes, actually. What was um, your first system that you got? Uh, whenever I was about eight or nine, it's kind of hard to remember. We sure. got a we got a Super Nintendo. Before I got that Super Nintendo, my mother was just like, "Hey, I got you a subscription to Nintendo Power magazine." Pouring through the whole thing, reading every article, I'd stick it in my book bag and take it to school with me, and I'd show the other kids, and I'd be like, "Oh my gosh, this is so cool! Look what they're, look what's coming out next!" As soon as I got Super Mario, World, now, we, me and my brothers were playing it, and everything like that. I started drawing, you know, Mario characters and stuff like that, and I did that a bunch for whatever reason. I, I don't know why I thought this was a, a thing to do, but I wanted to just talk about my favorite games. And so whenever, whenever I got like say Super Mario Kart, I wanted to talk about what I liked and what I didn't like about Super Mario Kart or Donkey Kong Country or whatever the case may be. And I would write a letter in and I'd put it in an envelope and I'd steal a stamp from my mother's bedroom and I'd just put it in the mailbox and send it off to Nintendo. As far as I know, I don't even know if they even got them. I have no idea. It's not like they ever got returned, but not, I never saw anything from it. But I was always sitting there just hoping like- That's still cool. They love to see what I have to say about games. I was doing that right from that young age. It was all about what what those games sparked in me. The, the thing was I knew that there was somebody out there who was making something to inspire joy in some kid somewhere else, right? And 
I, I, I was in love with that concept of this idea of making something specifically to make other people happy. You can pull one idea and somebody else is doing it in a different format, a different content. Mm -hmm. You know, podcaster to reviewer to videography to written content. Exactly. And I think everybody is kind of chasing that same sort of thing. We all have a fascination with how they're made, a fascination with the people that make them, and a fascination with the people that play them. And I think that's that's something that we all kind of share in the industry and what we do. Is we all are we're all obsessed with that that joy in one way or another. There's people that love to create things one way or the other. That's probably the biggest lesson you learn from life. You should just make something. It's what you're here for. It's the thing that's gonna la outlast you is making things. Whether it's you know writing about something or making a game or even just making memories with people, like sitting down with a game. So like this one, like this one. I fell in love with this game right from the rules because BoardGameTables.com had actually sent uh, the rule books out to, and it was just an email spread. I don't think it was any, any very deliberate, but they had sent it out to a bunch of people. So I actually got a, a copy of the rules before the game hit out, and then they just said, hey, if you have any feedback, here's a Google sheet that you can go and send us feedback on. So I read through the rule book, and of course the rule book is only a few pages. It's right. not really long. Right. And, but as soon as I read through the rules, I was like, oh, this is actually really good. <laughs> Uh, I wonder. I wonder what this is actually going to look like because you see the maps and stuff like that on there. But I want to see what the components actually did, and that's what drove me to Rado's uh, playthrough. I'm really impressed with like the production value of this giant board, all glossy and, mm -hmm. and these beautiful linen finished cards. Uh, like and these very giant oddly dice. shaped cards, by the way. They're not. Ex they're about tarot shaped. I'm not exactly sure if they're the exact same no, uh, size as tarot, but, like, but they're still huge and they're very impressive looking. And they even make the box so that if you want to go get more boards, mm -hmm. they'll sell the boards separately. Mm -hmm. So like I think it comes with four, but you could fit like eight to ten. Up to twelve, actually. Oh, yeah, up to twelve in the box. And that I mean that's still a very good number for most parties. Now granted, there's a lot of the rolling rights that go in and advertise it. We can play up to ninety nine. Even with this game, like as Rado uh, had pointed out, you can just print off a sheet and follow on a live stream. That's true. And everybody who's watching can play. That's true. And that's it. it, it is a testament to not only how good Roman Rights are and why I think Roman Rights have gotten so popular because they're so flexible in what they can do. But the other thing is that they really can like reach a whole wider audience than a lot of other games can. Not only just because of there's ease of setup, like we really just put out these boards here, set up cards, roll roll some dice and we're done. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of rules to them. As I mentioned before, having read the rules on this game, I immediately fell in love with it. And right. it's not that it's not that dense. So the, the, the quickness, the ease of access of it, of it, all of that is a testament to not only the genre, but how this game has followed in our footsteps. Let's see our new numbers. Let's see it. What do you got? 46 and 64. This is actually technically great and then also awful. Um, so I can put 64 in Georgia, which is right next to 67 in South Carolina, right next to 68 in North Carolina. Carolina. If I can loop it back to Tennessee in the 70s, so then 51 here in Arkansas, and I can do a 46 in Oklahoma. Ooh, I can do a 46 in Texas and get a circle. Okay, all right, okay. That's what I'm doing. Um, my route is real weird. So, yeah, mine's not good. Now, one thing about this game is you can, of course, draw preliminary lines to sort of kind of plan out what you're doing so you don't sure. lose track of things. That's probably a good idea. For so I'm, I'm like, this is definitely happening here. Yeah, and I'm, I, need are, to do, I need to make sure to do the same because those are locked, otherwise yeah. I'll trap myself. And I need to go this way. Do you continue writing reviews and sending them to other people while you're in college? Who was the first one? Because you're already making a face that says you probably did. Yeah. All right, so who was the first person in what game? And I'm assuming it was a video game still, right? Yes, and I believe the very, the 
very first one, whenever 1up.com was out, I had wrote a review for a game on the GameCube called Baby Kaitos. And it was a card-based sort of RPG game. I had a preliminary blog that just had copies of like reviews that I had done. Who were who were the next people? I, I believe around 2015, 2014 so was after when I tried graduate. to send in articles to the Escapist and to Giant Bomb. And those are your uh, portfolios and your copies. Yeah, and I sent an article, and then that didn't go anywhere. They didn't publish anything, but I tried. The right. important thing is to try. Right. What was the first postmodern board game you started to play? Carcassonne was the very first game. Okay. So he's like, hey, there's this game with vehicles and there's territory control and there's tile laying element. There's there's some timing and some tactics and some backstabbing and whatever on this map of the countryside and. That we all loved it. We all absolutely gaga over Carcassonne. And we were playing game up, game up, game up, game up, game. And the very next one, after having been inspired by, oh, there's other games like the Magic out there that are really, you know, cool for groups to play. And we can play, you know, a bunch of times and have, you know, lots of different memories with it. Right. Uh, another buddy of mine, Robert, had gone off to uh, Gen Con that year with his cousin. This is about 15. Uh, this would have been. This actually would have been back around 2010-2011, actually. So this was actually quite early on. So we had some more. So you're still in money. college. Yeah. So we're still in college at this time. And they, he had came back with, he came back with uh, Dominion. Oh. So that was the that was the next one. So Dominion, we, uh, as a lot of people can probably attest, Dominion was a bombshell. Yeah. It just took off. We were constantly playing, playing with different sets of cards, and then we. Started hungry for the expansion, so we went out and got the expansions. I mean, it's like cards. the granddaddy of deck builders. Absolutely. It's like that's where everybody got introduced before Clank, before Star Realms, or Hero Realms. Mm -hmm. It was Dominion that introduced everybody to what the idea and the mechanisms behind deck building. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of pleasure also out of that game, joy as we've been saying, in not only what your opponents do, but also uh, your own hubris. So if you, let's say, buck up in deck building and you didn't draw a hand and you just have a, a, a null turn, there's nothing you can do with that. There's, you can't buy any more cards, you just have to pass and do whatever. You probably will laugh because it's some, uh, something bad has gone wrong. That either somebody had loaded up your deck with stuff or you had done it. One of those two things, and there's a lot of joy in that. There was, there was a lot of that in Dominion that we enjoyed that we got pleasure from and not the opposite. And so that was one of the intriguing parts about deck builders. So that also led to the next one we played was Ascension. Not too long after that, so we'll say like after graduation, we'll say about the 2013, 2012, 2012, 2013 era was when we just, everything just took off. We were hunting down other games and looking up reviews. We found a board game geek and I started watching you know, shut up and sit down and Tom Vassell the memes from board games. They bring joy, man. Absolutely. It's, that's what it really is all about. That on one end, you have people that love playing the games just to play the games. And then other people, they don't really care so much about the games, they care about the people. And never everybody lands on that somewhere or the other. But the, the fact is that playing a board game isn't always just a factor of we're playing this to play the game or we're playing this to play with friends. It's you're going to do both. Mm -hmm. at some, in some capacity one way or the other. So we have East, North, and West. Sure do. And we Virginia have 51 and 15. 51 and 15. Now you can put a 51 next to a 51, right? Absolutely. Like they still connect. Mm -hmm. okay. They sure do. All right. All right. Well, I'm putting 51 in New England. And 15. I actually don't know why I put that there. Because I know that's, not, that's a dead space. 51. I got a 15 that's way out in the middle of no man's land. I'm doing a 15. Can I do a? F yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. 15 in New Mexico. Yep. So. so. Our yeah. next numbers are. Ooh, 10 and 1. All right. So what is it that made you go, this is what I should be writing about? Everybody knew that I wanted to be involved in games in some capacity. Mm -hmm. 
that same friend who had uh, introduced us all to Dominion also had seen on the Dice Tower Guild page uh, a post asking for contributors to Dice Tower News. And of course, he knew that I write a lot. He knew that I'm interested in doing this kind of thing. He said, hey, this is something you probably might want to look into. So that, of course, led me to uh, me uh, emailing Rob Searing. And I had started off, this was in November of 2015, was when I started off doing this. Um, and I, my first article that I wrote for Dice Tower News was over uh, Simurg. It was a, a dragon themed uh, worker placement game. Um, so, already had seen a press release, first time seeing that, first time uh, looking at a game that I had no knowledge of, and the best I can to write about that. And the article did you know, well enough for what it was, and I was very proud of it. And I just kept rolling with it. I was very dedicated to it. I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do as much as I possibly can. Every week, I was writing another article, reading up, reading up more stuff, possibly trying to push myself as best as I could to go and do as much writing as I possibly could in that time. And so I kept to a pretty good clip to it. Of like, how much, how much were you doing? It was, it was at least one or two a week. Everything that we wrote about was oh. uh, was just was just stuff that's on Kickstarter or stuff that was releasing. So these were just press releases. Okay. So uh, oftentimes I was writing a lot about games that hadn't I hadn't even touched. Oh. Okay. So I'd have to read up the rule books. So I was reading a lot of rule books uh, for games that I had no no even interest in going and playing, but I had to do that and then speak honestly about them in some capacity, mm. and that that was the challenge. That was the challenge, just to talk about games all the time, even ones that I wasn't excited about. Huh, that's interesting. I don't, because my idea was like, oh, I can't write or talk about something unless I have, you know, a physical copy. Mm -hmm. How do you write about a game that you've never touched? Yeah, I think it really came down to everything that came before. We're talking about all my knowledge from video games and talking about games and game design, my knowledge of... Uh, every, every like modern mechanics for war games, mm -hmm. and having read several new books before that point, I was very adept at being able to figure out how a game plays visually in my head. So I was very able to figure out, hey, this is how this this is how this works. This is what's actually exciting about this game. Like this is the mechanic. This is the twist that the designer wants you to see on a demo table to get there. And that's the thing I would highlight. Whenever I would start talking more about a game. I, my structure for writing the article would always be, here's the basis of what this is, here's the stats, you know, it plays this many players, it does about this long, so on and so forth. And now I get to, here's why you should look at it. And that would be, be the hook, and that'd be the thing that we try to use all the time in articles. We, we weren't always necessarily, you know, told, hey, this is your structure for your articles you should use, but that was the one that I found that worked. And that was the one that I uh, stuck to for so long. That's neat. Over 170 articles written for Dice Tower News over the years. Like to this date now? To this date. Mm -hmm. To this date. Mm -hmm. Now, do you still do an article for the Dice Tower? Yes, I do. Every week? Uh, not every week so much. It, it, it varies depending on at time, uh, how many press releases we have, because news kind of sputters in and out. There's certain periods where it's really, really vibrant and there's lots of news and there's not. We just came out of the winter period. So around Christmas time, the news kind of dies down a little bit and it picks up towards Kickstarter season, which we're just kicking off right now. We, you know, tax season and Kickstarter season are ubiquitous with each other. So sure, like we're sure. Use, we're that makes sense. Both of those. But uh, that's, that's definitely the thing that uh, uh, you just kind of get used to over time is like when, when the timing of everything. But I did write an article this last week. Do you do mainly still press releases? Do you do reviews or do you do a mix of press releases, news? I try to do and reviews. reviews in different formats over the years outside of Dice Tower News. So when I'm on BGG, I've tried to do a couple of reviews, especially through comments. To try to that was one way that I actually get a lot of my knowledge from board games is the comments section on board game Geek. So I would always try to uh, to submit a kind of a thick review of a game through there. And I know there's a, I'm not the only one by far. There's quite a few other users that do this. I think it's a valuable tool. But it, it is reviewing without wanting anything back. There's no Patreon attached to it, there's no advertisements attached to it, it's just you reviewing for the sake of reviewing. And that is probably how I would continue to do that, because I will always do reviews that are just free for the public, because that's how I think it should be. 
Gotcha. I do it absolutely uh, for the love of my heart, and to have it there for that, uh, like, easy for people to see. I'm gonna throw them up here if I can. Yeah. And where are you throwing that at? Up in Montana. Gotcha. We got Iowa, California, Minnesota, and you got Northwest and Central areas. We have 31 and 13, which we've also seen before. 31 and 13. Mm -hmm. But 13 would have been in a good spot, but now it's not. I'm not really able to use all my numbers efficiently. That uh, sucks, but at the same time, it's just something you just got to do. Oh man, let me throw that in California. There you go. I actually kind of uh, feel this is a very appropriate analogy to life in a lot of ways because you have excitements and disappointments and that sort of that buoy curve that just kind of happens all the time. Like you have like just great mounts, great, great peaks and just that's exactly what I needed. Versus just like, what has happened? This is terrible. <laughs> that just happens so frequently throughout this entire game. Oh, so we got a wild now. So I can do stars anywhere here, here, or Yeah, here. and of course if you put it in the, you're only gonna put the one star. You don't put two, you just put the one. But of course, if you just do still put it in the uh, in the state, you get to circle it. So mm -hmm. that's important to know as well. I feel like I'm gonna have to put a star. Oh, can I put it up there? Oh, I can. All right. I gotta put a star in between ten and one. There's no way. That's crazy. I've also played games where we've never gotten wilds. I've gotten games where we've seen like eight or nine wilds. So it's just it's, a random, you know, it's random. The randomization. Hey, of, you're just trying your best to, to make to make the best use out of that randomness. Yeah. This is 69. I made this mistake before. This is 69 and 96. It's not the same. When I'm reading them upside down, it throws me off. All right. So I feel like I'm throwing away a lot of. I don't know. I guess this can connect in 69. I had to throw away the last 69. Uh, I actually did two. Oh, you know what? Actually, I could use 69. Can I put that? I can do that. Can I do that in Tennessee? I had to throw it away the last time, but I can use it this time. That's interesting that you're able to actually use it this time. Uh, I mean, the states are opened up. Yeah. It wasn't open up last time for me. Actually, you know what? I'm actually in the same boat now that you mentioned that. I can actually do the same thing. Feels good, don't it? Yes, it does. Do you like doing news more than doing um, reviews? Um, It varies. It really does. Uh, I would say I like doing reviews more just because I get I get the, I get full control of that content. Whereas at news, I try to keep it as a set of discipline. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna force myself to do uh, a news article tonight. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at this press release. I'm gonna look at the, all the material. I'm gonna try to do the best that I can do to write that out. I messed up so badly on my numbers. I really should have done. I should have had this somewhere better, but I didn't. Not good. Yeah, I understand that feel. I'm gonna put you so in the north. No, I'm gonna put you up here. Can so. I do Iowa? Oh, I can. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. 43, 43. And I feel like, yeah, this is, I'm getting a lot of doubles, which is the first time I've yeah. seen that. It, it can happen, and it, uh, it's not always kind. So, very quickly, shuffle, 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 shuffle. Alright, here we go. 30. Zero, 03 and 30. Zero, 03. I know. I, I was like, I there's need, no way I need neither of those numbers right anything now. Anything below 10 is going to work. Because I was like, oh, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. 30, on the other hand, works out real well. Because I can stick it in Arizona. I just I just got a bunch of trash numbers. I'm hoping to be able to connect what I have. No, it's not Arizona, New Mexico. All right. No, that's Arizona. Geography. <laughs> Geography. 
Happens to me all the time. It's my day job. I have to look at you guys. It's not a bunch. 51 and 15. Oh, that's a nice you do a lot of conventions with the Dice Tower. What is that like for you? You're there to help set up the booth, to help tear it down, to help man the booth. You're there before the doors open for the public. It's gotta be a different experience than waiting for the doors to open and then the, you're part of that flood. But how is it different? Uh, it's mind blowing every single time that I do it. Um, to be honest, the very first time that I did it was I was I was an absolutely shaky, nervous mess. Um, I got into it to begin with just because I wanted to do more, and I, I always still to this day I always want to do more. Um, but it's always a matter of energy and opportunity and things like that. But it's literally began with me just emailing Tom, just saying, "Hey, I want to help out the booth. I want to I want to actually just volunteer and just volunteer time and do whatever I can." He said, sure, okay, come to Origins. So this was Origins of, uh, I believe 2018, was actually when I was, so I'd already been writing for the Dice Tower for a couple years by this point. Uh, and I had showed up to that one just going, nobody. Having physically met, nobody. So I showed up, there's Z, there's Tom. I, the first person I walked up to was Eric Summer, and I cracked open a box and scared the tar out of him. So that was embarrassing uh, <laughs> at that point in time. I still, I still think about that moment all the time. Not too far after that, like, I got really fairly comfortable with them. Like, they, they accepted me for what they were, and it helped that I had other people around me who were also sort of in the same boat. Uh, that was the first time that I had actually met Mike Delisio. And so Mike Delisio, Solomon Games, uh, he's also an Indianapolis native. Uh, he also went there, also being a fan, he, you know, just wanted to get his voice out there. He wanted to talk about his passion, sure. the same as anybody else. And so I, I really admired him a lot from that point. And I, I loved having that connection with him. And I also, uh, inadvertently, just by name alone, that's being called Mike and Mike, also met Mike Parkinson, who I, I remembered seeing his videos on the Dice Tower about how he did a lot of uh, upgrade components for games. He loved to do a lot of crafty things. Yeah. You know, me walking into that into that convention hall and being able to like, I think you handed me a cup of coffee and then, you know, walk around with me. Um, it was, it's not like it's overwhelming because it's very quiet. Uh, you need to get to your booth and maybe restock and do that kind of stuff. Um, but there, I guess there is a small overwhelmingness to it. And to have somebody that you know, is a friend and someone that will, hey, come with me and, you know, I'll show you around. I think that's, I think that's really what everybody wants in some capacity, was to, was to have that kind of connection. There's a lot of people that are just there to do business, right? Like, everybody's here to work, everybody's here to do whatever. And that is absolutely necessary. It's constant take an incredible amount of time and attention and energy. But when you have those moments where somebody just sits back there and talks with you, and, you know, sit down and chat, let's go have a walk or whatever, all of those moments are special. I remember pretty much all of those over the years. There's something about meeting these people that is that's very special to me. Yeah. And building new friendships is always special to me. And building friendships with these with these people have been, you know, with Tom, with Lizzie, with Mike. Um, it's I, I use this phrase all the time. It's magical. Yeah. And it is. It, it's very special yeah, to me. Is. I, love, I, I love my convention family. I think anybody can get in and anybody can do this. It's another reason why I do these videos is anybody can can participate and do something. Volunteering, videos, written, podcasting. And when it comes to uh, all those people that go around conventions, when I first started off, as probably a lot of people might be able to, to uh, empathize with, I felt a lot of imposter syndrome, like I don't really belong here, sort of in a way. Like I was, I was a fan of the Dice Tower, but I was also like somebody who's very interested in design, and I was very new at everything. I never had a name for myself. I was just there voluntarily. Hey, I'm here to work. Hey, I'm here to do whatever. And I realized not too long after, everybody is that way. Everybody is that way at some point in time or another. Yeah. Um, 
the, there's several people, Mark included, uh, that we both love and adore. Um, also, Eric Summer started off as a fan before he started doing work for the Dice Tower. So, after learning about those people and meeting them and understanding that thing, I got a lot more comfortable with it. I'm like, we're all just here because we love games. And we love how way it makes us feel. We love the way it's impacted our lives. We want to share that with people. And we want to try to do our work as best as we can for them. We want to contribute back to them. Have you written your two numbers down? Uh, I've written... See, I've written my 51s. And I've written my 15. So yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm actually constantly begging for, for doubles. Let's see here. That's not exactly true, ladies oh, and gentlemen. I'm I, actually having a wonderful time. Can I... But it is hard. I'm getting wrecked. It is not easy. <laughs> And then 56, I can put that in Mississippi down here. I need 70s and 80s stuff. And I need 70s and 80s to be there. Alright. Get this, get this yeah. trash out of my face. Central, so. It's so rare to see all of them be the same races at this point to me. Because I, th I think it has to do with how well the deck has been shuffled. And then uh, left of its own devices, 47 and 74. 74. 74 helps a lot. Can I put it in Kentucky? Yes, you can. You can. Is that where you put it? Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, like, you were really quick to answer that. <laughs> because I was looking at it really hard. I was like, I really need you right oh, there. Oh, no. Can I put it there? Oh, I don't know. Did I just do bad things? Oh no, I might have just messed up. Oh no, did you? Oh yeah. 69 was my last one, right? Mm -hmm. oh, I actually man. do think I was really close. That's just a gut feeling that has nothing to do with any actual uh, analysis whatsoever. And then 47? Oh man, so much pressure. It's uh, it's yeah. getting spicy. Ugh. It's getting, it's getting real spicy. Oh man, I'm not, I'm not pressure from such a simple game. It is. I love it, but it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt me sometimes. That's 83 and 38. I'm just gonna fill it up. Filling in over there if I can. Can I? No. Wow. Dude, I can put it right here. So it's going around. And then coming over here. There's technically almost more points up north now than there is down south. I need some kind of a high 50s, low 60s. Mm -hmm. And that's the one I don't need. <laughs> And I basically and the, uh, I don't hit the New England area because I cut myself off. Ah, we're not we're never gonna see triples out there. But if we can see one more wild, wow, that'd help out a hell of a lot. Yeah. Oh, 43 to 34 again. I'm running out of dead space. Me too. Uh well, I have a great spot for it, but I can't put it there because of the cards. Yeah. That hurts me a lot. So I can do that. And then 34? I don't know. I'm just gonna... Oof. Yeah, I'm not using these, right? Oof. Yeah, I'm not using these. Oof. Alright. I can still make it work, though. And not take any penalties. Alright. Let's get these things out of here. All right. Bring it in. Uh, 97 and 79? Oh, that's... I'll put that 97 here. 
I like put myself into a corner where I oh, need I a very do. specific number. I do. I'm the same way. 79. All right, I'm done. Just throw it away. Same. All right. That did not help me. Uh. Now hold on. Do you have? I think I'm, I'm missing a number somewhere. You? I don't think you put a 15 down again. So yeah. Uh, oh, how many 15s? One, two. Three fifteens. So if you don't okay. have another, I have to put an X. So I'll put an X. So this last one. Yep. We actually don't care about these. We only, we only drew them just for the well, wilds. I got two blanks. Oh, do you have two blanks? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's strange because we only had. Uh, you have two blanks. Yeah, I have two blanks. Okay, so we're actually on the same boat. That's fine. So these are our last two numbers. Uh, right. That also means the locations don't matter, so you just place them wherever. We because these are the, the last, last two. Because of the last two. Right. So it's just the numbers. Oh, 86 and 68? No! Oh, that's great. No, it's not. I actually did need that. Oh, that cuts my tour. All right. I actually did, that's the exact number I needed. Ugh. That's, oh man, that hurts. Uh, all right. So, we score by... So draw, draw your line out. Yep. So do that, and then all you'll do is... Uh, Dang it. I lost like one state out of that, but that's fine. Oh, I lost. Uh, so you'll, you'll count... I lost a whole territory. You'll count, you'll count all the states yep. that are in the line. That are connected. Yeah, and then you'll, uh, all of the ones that have circles, you'll count add up after one that, and then the total is what you'll have. Oi. I didn't have many circles. Oi. Oh, golly. Does that say 22? Yeah, uh, oh. 27. Oh! I lost. <laughs> I got cut off twice in my route, and... Uh, I like how you drew this solid wall. I just cracked it off on the side there. Like, there's, there's no... <laughs> these places are quarantined. This is zombie territory now. It's real bad, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. It's but yeah, you got it. I think now we should have uh, a donut. Yeah, I like to have some donuts. It's never what it's so far. If you're out there, make stuff, do whatever you can to just create things, and keep trying. That's the one thing I want to take away from all of this, is just keep trying, keep making stuff. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep limelighting. All right.